one one thing, and, and <laughs> you, you addressed the thing about about co-occurring treatment. Uh, one thing that I, I had that come out in talking to different people was that it, that it, before July one, you didn't have the safety net, and that there were actually people being sent to <coughs> Cherokee Mental Health for co-occurring treatment because it wasn't offered. You did the you did the drug and alcohol treatment, but you wouldn't do the co-occurring, which some of them were needing. Right. And I guess the bottom line for me has come down to this. I mean, you're you know you're asking for us to contribute money, and my question is is what about Cherokee Mental Health? Where I mean, are, are you're asking us to donate money, and there's another provider for a service that at one time you were not providing. And I, I, that's where I, I do have, I've developed an issue with that. Sure. And I, I, I like to know why, why we should look at Helen Ross McNabb versus Cherokee Mental Health. Well, and I think I can answer that sure, if I absolutely. can interject. Sure. From the, the very time that we started in Hamlin County, 2008, when we merged with New Hope, and we opened our clinic doors, what people told us is we can't get into Cherokee. So we did a very limited kind of marketing plan. They're, they're just... Unfortunately, there's just that number of folks who need services. At that point in time, all of the safety net dollars from the state level were allotted to Cherokee. Since 2008 up until January of this year, we have collected data of every single person we referred to the safety net program because we were trying to show the state that these are folks that we could be treating if we had some of those dollars. And after much debate and going back to the state and and asking for those dollars, and I think it also had something to do with the, the closing of Lakeshore, we are now able to access those dollars for this area. And so at the time, that's where the state was paying for those services. Um, but we still had people coming to us saying, I can't get in Cherokee. I'm on a waiting list at Cherokee. I can't get in. Um, and, and then just to redirect the question about drug court, what we're providing is treatment. My vision of drug court is a narrow avenue for jail diversion. So I don't know of any treatment so, I mean, that drug court yeah. provides. So I mean, I mean just to kind of differentiate. It's, those diff are it's just different. Drug court's different. You know, basically, and I, I, I go do the, the, the assessments for, for Barbara when she needs them. I'll go over to the jail and do the assessments for her. Um, it's, it's, you know, I'll make a recommendation to do residential treatment, to do just intensive outpatient, and I'll send Barbara a letter with my recommendation. Scott Lee is one of our counselors, sits on her treatment team and advises as well. Um, it, it, it's, again, a great program, but it's, it's kind of a, it's not all encompassing, you know, because obviously Barbara, I'm sure, is on a limited budget. You know, she has a couple case managers. She has to keep up with, you know, 15, 16 people. I'm not sure how many it is. Uh, and, and what they'll do is, is if I recommend residential, they'll send, she'll send them to residential treatment, and they'll come right back to me for intensive outpatient. As a matter of fact, right now I have, I think it's about 13 of her clients in my current aftercare that I run. Um, and, and, uh, you know, we recommend that and then come to aftercare for you. Because it, just like uh, Andy was talking about when we met Tuesday, the longer the continuum of care, the better chances they have to stay in recovery. You know, uh, the, the other thing I would say in terms of uh, Cherokee versus the Helen Ross with the Center, uh, you know, it, it, it's what we have found is that we're not necessarily competing with anyone. All we're doing is providing access to quality care. And it's pretty evident that it was needed because in a very short period of time, we have 1,100 people who have access to care here. So it's not... I, I don't look at it as, as us against Cherokee, nor do I look at it as Cherokee against the McNabb Center. I think the positive way to reframe it is that all we're trying to do is build a facility okay. that's going to provide us with more space to serve more human children and adults. So 
That's the whole process. Red, 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 the majority of it is treatment space. That's 51%. Yeah, is treatment space? But I'm saying the majority is 51%. Is yeah, it 90% yeah, or is yeah, it 51%? No, I, I don't know the exact, I've, I've never been asked that question before. Did you I can answer it this okay. way. I mean, right now we have, you saw the drawing of the three treatment rooms. Mm -hmm. It would double the six treatment rooms. We have three treatment rooms on the adult side. We would have double. We would double that to, and that's just following the Blunt County model. You would double that to six treatment rooms. Right now, we have case managers that go into the homes, like Erica. Mm -hmm. She works out of her car. She doesn't have office space. So yes, we would dedicate would some space. Would she need office space though? I mean, Absolutely. she mainly goes out. She works she out does, of her car. I think everybody needs a place to come, check their emails, get information, <coughs> um, have a place to grab a breakfast bar. I mean, yeah, I think she does. I think she needs to feel a part of this team. And I, mm -hmm. I that's one the square footage again. It's going to be between 7,000 and 7,500. 7,000 7, and 7,500. <coughs> the way that the property lays that the city gave us, it looks like that we could probably have an unfinished basement for a future expansion. And out of 11 counties that you treat, didn't you say, how many other counties did you estimate on? None. 80% of the people that we're going to treat are going to be handled in county basement. But you all are also the regional hub. Okay. Uh, this is a financial question, and I, re I, I really don't, I don't know. think it's 11 counties. I don't think we're serving 11 counties. I'm sorry. I thought you well, said there were 11 she, counties. Yeah, there are 11 counties. But it's going to be a limited number. Yes. From but out of the 7,000 square foot building, foot building, you're going to add six treatment rooms. Is that what I'm hearing? Right. Now that doesn't include uh, the therapist room. We also have three. Well, three, 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 and this is also, it's also a, a difference between us and Cherokee. Um, the total cost of the project is going to be a million to a million one. The McNabb Center uh, has been a community mental health center for 64 years. We've always been a local provider. I'm also an East Tennessean, and I've never thought that government should be all things to all people. Never. We've raised money uh, primarily in Knox County, but in Blount County, a little bit in Sevier County, and now in Hamlin County. We have never asked local government to contribute more than 10 to 15 percent of any project. Well, I've always thought that that was fair because we're trying to address local problems and local issues and that local government would be happy to participate in trying to come up with a plan to solve those problems. Cherokee, on the other hand, they get their expansion dollars through the federal government. We've never asked the federal government for capital <coughs> money. We've never asked the state government for capital money because we're a local organization. And we believe that if you have a jail overcrowding issue locally, then you ought to have a local agency to help you try and solve the problem. If you have a local A&D issue, alcohol and drug issue, you ought to have a local organization trying to help you solve that. And that local government ought to be part of that process. So that's my answer.